It's the most valuable resource on Earth. UN Chief Antonio Guterres recently called it the lifeblood of humanity. Most of us know it as simply water, or H2O. It covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface. Just 2.5% of that is fresh water. And most of it is either locked up in ice or is in the ground, leaving only a little over 1% that can be consumed. A UN report this year said around 2 billion people around the world don't have access to safe drinking water. Scientists attribute some water security-related issues directly to climate change. In China, more than 400 million people depend on the Yellow River, or Huanghe, for water. And officials have warned of shortages this year due to extreme floods and droughts. This can, in turn, undermine agriculture and food production. A UN report says around 80 percent of the people under water stress live in Asia, in particular northeast China, India and Pakistan. Around 5 billion people, that's about two-thirds of the world's population, are expected to face at least one month of water shortages by 2050. Still, the looming water crisis cannot entirely be blamed on climate change alone. There is the issue of contaminated water. Scientists estimate more than 80 percent of the world's wastewater is released to the environment without being treated. Another issue? Overconsumption. The UN says over the last four decades, water usage has risen about 1 percent a year. This has been attributed to population growth and changing consumption patterns. Access to clean drinking water is not a given, even in the world's wealthiest nation. In the United States, tens of millions of people don't have safe drinking water, while more than two million live without running water, indoor plumbing or flush toilets. And with the nation's entire southwest in the grips of a mega drought, a resource war threatens to further marginalize the most vulnerable. Tony Waterman reports from Navajo Nation. For the first time in his life, Tony Woody has clean water running into his home, making that morning cup of coffee much easier to put together. I had it a haul water on my own. What was that like? Um, frustrating because you need gas money, gas. And how far away was the water source? Um, probably like 12 miles. Tony lives in Navajo Nation, a self-governing region that spans parts of the states of New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. It was founded under an 1868 treaty when the U.S. said it would give a permanent home to the Navajo after forcing them off their native lands. Yet 30 percent of the families here live without running water in their homes. They have for generations. The nonprofit Dig Deep has installed more than 560 off grid water systems in Navajo Nation, including Tony's. Massive tanks are dug into the ground and filled monthly with clean water. Do you see these water systems as a permanent solution? It's um, half and half. If they're close to a a uh, water line, then we're going to try to help them get that water line to their homes. It's going to be ongoing for a long, long time. And climate change could put water access even further out of reach for the tribe. It's been rainy and wet on our trip through Navajo Nation, but this type of weather is becoming exceedingly rare. The entire American Southwest is in the grips of a 23 year mega drought and researchers say that it's the driest it's been in at least 1200 years with absolutely no end in sight. The Colorado River, which provides water to 40 million Americans across seven states, is now at the center of a contentious brawl over vanishing water supplies. The river's flow has dropped 20 percent since 2000. We simply don't have enough water to go around. For every one degree Celsius increase, we should expect about a 10 percent decrease in flows in the river. We do expect that the future of the Colorado River is a drier future. The government has asked the states to slash their water usage, but so far they haven't managed to reach an agreement. I wonder how you see the battle over the Colorado River right now between the seven states playing into this issue of water access for Native people. It definitely is 
increasing tensions. Everyone is wondering, where's my water going to come from? And nobody wants to give up their current rights. But the reality is that tribal nations haven't been able to fully utilize their water rights. And so what that has created is an unequal playing field and real imbalances in power. The case has now reached the Supreme Court, which must decide how far the government's responsibilities go in ensuring water access on the reservation. As they wait, members of the Navajo tribe are left securing their own future water supply, one truckful and one water system at a time. Tony Waterman, Navajo Nation, New Mexico. For more on Native Americans' struggle for water, catch CNA Correspondent tonight at 9.30 Singapore, Hong Kong time. You can also watch it wherever and whenever you like on CNA.Asia.